So you're taking your first upper division course in macroeconomics and you've just started learning about the solar growth model. If you're having difficulty grasping the many details of this important model, then this video series should help you immensely. This series will cover many issues involving the solar growth model, including a few variations of the model that feature technological growth and population growth. I'll also provide numerical examples, graphs, and simulations using MATLAB in future videos. In this particular video, I will begin with a simplified version of the solar growth model. It is important to start with a simplified model, develop a strong understanding of it, and then add elements from there. We'll see how the model improves with each element that we add to it. So without further ado, let's jump in. One of the key underlying themes of the solar growth model is endogenous capital accumulation. So is capital accumulation sufficient for economic growth? And if so, to what extent? And let's say that's not the case. Let's say capital accumulation isn't all that important for economic growth. Well, what would we need to add to the model in order to actually promote economic growth? So these are the different kinds of questions that we'll be answering here throughout this video series. So now I'd like to introduce the model by writing down the key equations of the most basic version of the solo model. And from there, I'll describe all the little details of each of these equations, how they're relevant to the real world, and then we'll start to discuss a solution method. So the first equation I'm gonna go over here is just your standard production function. So on the left-hand side, we have GDP, and you'll also notice that GDP here has a time subscript. So any variable that has a time subscript is endogenous in this model. So it is determined within the model. And time in this case is discrete. So time starts at period zero, then it goes to period one, period two, period three, et cetera, and it goes on forever. So on the right-hand side, we have the actual production function. And any variable that you see that doesn't have a time subscript is just an exogenous variable, or it's just a parameter, right? So we just give it some value and we just leave it as is. So the first variable here that you'll see, which is exogenous, is A. So A represents total factor productivity. You can think about it as representing technology. Next, we have capital, which in this case is endogenous, which should be no surprise because this model features endogenous capital accumulation. And then we also have labor supply, which in this particular version of the model, I'm assuming it's exogenous. Later on, we'll actually endogenize it by introducing population growth. And last, we have this parameter alpha, which I'll go more into detail about alpha later on. Up next is the capital accumulation equation. So this is one of the key equations of the model. Well, in this case, we're only gonna have four equations, so it's just one fourth of our model here, um, but it is a very important equation. So the capital accumulation equation, sorry about that, um, basically states that capital tomorrow, so let's say T plus one is tomorrow and T is today. So capital accumulation tomorrow is equal to how much we invest today. So I is investment plus the amount of capital that doesn't depreciate today, right? So let delta be the depreciation rate. Therefore, one minus delta is the fraction of capital that doesn't depreciate. So up next is a very basic resource constraint, which just states that consumption plus investment is equal to output. And last but not least, we have a resource allocation equation. So it basically just tells you how investment is determined in the model. So in this case, we're just going to assume that investment is just some constant fraction S of output. So to review, let's go ahead and list the endogenous variables and the exogenous variables of this model, so far at least, with this reduced version of the solar growth model. So the endogenous variables are those that have T subscripts. So we have output, capital, investment, and consumption. So that's four variables. We also happen to have four equations, so that's going to be important. So next are exogenous variables, which we actually have quite a few here. We have total factor productivity, which is A. We have this parameter alpha. Labor supply is exogenous in this case. We have the depreciation rate. And then we have S, which is gonna be our savings rate. And we actually need one more exogenous variable to actually solve this model. 
we're going to need to know what capital is in the very first period, which I'm just going to call period zero. So if you have basically values for all of these exogenous variables, then you can actually solve for each of the endogenous variables for all time periods. So one thing that's incredibly useful when we're coming up with a solution to the solo model is to write everything in per capita terms. So that includes the variables and the equations. So what do I mean by per capita? Well, that just means, let's say we're talking about GDP per capita, which I'm going to denote as lowercase y is equal to GDP divided by the population, or in this case, the labor supply, which is also equal to the population in our model. So this is GDP per capita. Similarly, we'll have capital per capita. So all lowercase letters just refer to per capita terms. That's just equal to capital divided by the population. Similarly, we have consumption, which is just, so consumption per capita is equal to consumption divided by the population. And last, we have investment per capita, that's just investment divided by population. So now let's go ahead and rewrite all of the four equations of the solo model um, in per capita terms. So let's first start off with the production function. So remember our production function was as follows. So divide each side by L and we know right away that the left-hand side, by definition, is just GDP per capita. And the left-hand side is equal to A times. Um, so the L in the denominator will cancel with the L in the numerator. So what we're left with is K to the alpha and then L to the negative alpha. We can rewrite this as A times K divided by L raised to the power alpha because L was raised to the power negative alpha. So move it to the denominator and then factor out the alpha. And what's in the parentheses is just capital per capita. So we're left with GDP per capita is equal to A times capital per capita raised to the power alpha. So that is our production function in per capita terms. That one probably had the most steps out of the bunch when it came to a derivation. So now let's go ahead and move on to the capital accumulation equation. So that was KT plus one is equal to investment plus one minus delta times KT. So divide each side by L so we can just divide each variable by L accordingly. And this one's easy because this just gives us capital per capita in period T plus one is just equal to investment per capita plus the non-depreciated capital per capita. So we're almost done here. We have two more equations. They're all pretty straightforward to derive in per capita terms. So next let's go ahead and look at our resource constraint. So that was C T plus IT, so consumption plus investment, is equal to GDP. Divide each side by L, and we can just divide each variable by L accordingly. That just gives us capital per capita plus investment per capita is equal to GDP per capita. And then last, of course, we have the allocation of resources, which just tells us that investment is just equal to some constant fraction of GDP. Divide each side by L and you get investment per capita is just equal to the savings rate times GDP per capita. All right, so we've got the per capita variables and the per capita equations. So now let's discuss the solution method to the solo model. So one thing we can do to really simplify things is we can actually take these first three equations and simplify them into one equation. So the way we can do that is we can go ahead and substitute investment in the capital accumulation equation 
with s times yt. And then we can also substitute yt in the investment equation with just the production function. So let's go ahead and do that here. So we have kt plus one is equal to s times a times kt to the alpha plus one minus delta kt. So this equation only involves K. So it only involves capital per capita or capita per per capital per person, whichever you prefer. I'm just gonna keep saying capital per capita, it's fun. So we have, like I said, an equation that only depends on capital per capita. And so as long as we know what capital is in period zero, I'm gonna argue that we can find capital in all future periods. So if we know what capital is in all future periods or all periods in general, then we can easily recover GDP per capita in any given period because we already know what KT is. So that'll give us YT. And if we know YT, we can also find IT by this equation. So it's just savings times GDP per capita. And furthermore, we can find what consumption is because consumption is just uh, GDP minus investment. So this equation is going to be fundamental in our solution method. If you recall from earlier in the video, I mentioned that one of the exogenous variables will be capital in period zero. Well, that's great because we also know what the population is, which is just some constant, right? So this will give us capital per capita in period zero, which is just capital in period zero divided by the population. So we know what that parameter is, and we also know what delta is, we know alpha, we know A, we also know S. So if we look at, let's say, capital per capita in period one, that's just equal to S times A times K zero to the alpha plus one minus delta K to the zero. So everything on the right-hand side is exogenous. So we can recover capital per capita in period one quite easily just by plugging in numbers. Similarly, we can find capital per capita in period two with the same equation, but replace the K zero with K one. So I'm just gonna write this in quotations because I'm too lazy to write all of that out again. Um, and similarly, we can find K three and so on. And that'll give us the entire sequence of capital per capita which from there, as I mentioned, we can recover GDP per capita, investment per capita, and consumption per capita for all periods. So I know I mentioned I would wait until a future video to do MATLAB exercises, although I think this is the perfect opportunity to at least do one. Earlier I mentioned that as long as you have numbers to plug in for all the endogenous, or sorry, exogenous variables in the solo model, you can actually solve for the sequence of all endogenous variables. And I'm gonna illustrate that here with MATLAB. So the first step here is to first plug in numbers for those exogenous variables, which I'm also gonna to refer to as parameter values. So some of these are just common values that you'll see throughout the macro literature and in various textbooks. Some of these are just random numbers that I've plugged in. So don't worry too much about these values. Although if you're going to try this on your own, just make sure you're using values that make sense. So for example, with a savings rate, it wouldn't make sense to use a savings rate greater than one because you can't really save more than the amount of production there is in the economy, right? So just be careful if you're actually gonna be plugging in numbers, just make sure that they actually make sense. So the next step is to define capital in period zero and then use that to recover the per capita variables in period zero. In MATLAB, it's gonna look a little confusing because period zero looks like period one here. Let's just call it the initial period from now on. So the initial period capital is defined as follows. You can plug in some other number if you'd like. It really doesn't matter what you plug in here. Just make sure it's some positive number though because it wouldn't make sense to plug in something negative, um, obviously. So next we have the per capita terms. So remember capital per capita is just capital divided by the population. And from there we can find the other per capita variables. So this just gives us the initial period variables 
And from there, we can actually solve for the sequence of per capita endogenous variables. So I'm using a for loop to do this. So if you haven't done this before, don't worry too much about it. This is just for the sake of illustration. You probably should be more interested in the results rather than the code, but I'm going over that anyways, just because I think it's just good for review of what we mentioned earlier. So the first equation here is just the capital accumulation equation, but where I've plugged in everything for, I've plugged in capital for the production function and investment here. So this just gives us capital in period J as a function of capital in period J minus one. So from there you can find GDP per, per capita, you can find investment per capita and consumption per capita. And this for loop will basically just spit out that sequence um, iteratively. So once that sequence is found, um, I'll go ahead and just plot everything. In fact, let's go ahead and do that now very quickly. So here's our result. So this plots each endogenous variable over time. So we have our initial period and over time, we, it looks like we get some growth. However, it looks like things level out eventually. And this is an interesting feature of the solo growth model because again, in the name, it's solo growth model. Are we getting growth? Well, we're getting growth for a period of time, but not forever. And we need to figure out why that's the case. So first of all, why do we get growth in the solo model for a period of time? And why does it eventually level out? Well, that'll be a topic for the next video. Um, so I want you to kind of brainstorm ideas as to why that's the case. So think about the equations of the model and what features of those equations could be responsible for this. I'll give you a hint. One of them involves a production function. The other one involves depreciation of capital. And furthermore, so in videos much further down the line, we'll go ahead and add some other things to the model that'll actually give us growth over a much longer horizon. In fact, we'll actually get growth um, permanently. Um, so these are things to look out for. Another thing to mention here is that we're looking at per capita variables. So we can recover the um, non per capita variables. So just capital, GDP, consumption and investment. We can recover the um, normal values for that just by multiplying these by L. So there really isn't anything um, exciting going on there. They're gonna have the same behavior as the per capita counterparts. So in the next video, as I mentioned, we'll go over um, why this becomes flat eventually, why we actually get growth for a period of time though. And yeah, we'll go ahead and actually find a closed form solution for these constant values that these endogenous variables eventually converge to. And that's gonna be known as a steady state. So stay tuned for that.